Hey guys, welcome to Multifamily Mondays with me, Pam, your host. Today we're going to talk about some of the best loans for um, those of you starting on your multifamily investing journey. Um, I've done them all, so here's the quick lowdown of all the different types that I've utilized and maybe some of you might have utilized other different um, ways as well, so I'm all ears, would love to hear from you on that. So the number one, for me, my opinion, the number one way um, to get financing for your multifamily deal is, it's called OPM. And I've talked about this in a different episode. I also teach about this. In short, it stands for other people's money. The idea is to raise capital. You put in some money, some skin into the game, not as much as the whole thing, but you get other people to join forces with you. And for some of you, that might sound scary because I know it was for me when I first started off. To me, the number one best way, OPM. And a lot of people, when they hear of that, they think of uh, people taking advantage of others, of just, oh, I'm gonna get duped, or they're gonna take advantage of me and not pay me out. Well, I have to put it out there for you guys. This is a relationship business. Don't just willy-nilly give out money to someone, right? You need to trust them and also follow the guidelines of the SEC, which is the Securities Exchange Commission's rules, right? So meaning if you were to work with accredited investors, there's a certain criteria that they have to meet and you need to interview them before you bring them on board. You don't just walk around collecting money, okay? Because that's also illegal. Um, so anyways, what you wanna start off with is working with other people's money and I go through great detail on how to raise capital that way so if you haven't listened to my beginners course on it go ahead and sign up for it I go through all the details and the numbers of my first deal ever which was my six unit deal and I remember I was so mind blown I didn't think I could ever number one raise capital because I was a shy nerdy engineer pretty much still I'm shy um, believe it or not and Secondly, six units. I could barely afford one condo in San Diego at that time. I, I remember I was so mind blown of like, how the hell am I gonna raise money to buy six units, let alone try to even raise money to buy my own property, for example. Um, and so here's where having a mentor is key. And I talked about this in a previous uh, episode, so if you didn't listen to that one yet, go ahead and check it out, uh, You know my tips and why I chose to get a mentor because they really helped kind of bring my mindset, like my headspace into a right path so that I could think positively about raising capital. That's my number one favorite way. It's not always fun because it does put you outside your comfort zone if you're an introvert like me because you kind of feel icky. Sometimes when you're starting off, you're like, oh no, am I gonna be the sleazy salesman? But you're not. You're selling yourself, your brand. People are investing in your capabilities. So that's a mindset shift. Um, so that's something to think about, right? Um, the second best way uh, is to get financing with a big institution, meaning like Chase, Wells Fargo, Bank of America, or other big lenders out there because they require you to only put down like 25%. I mean, at one point, this was a couple years back, I only had to put in like 20% um, as a down payment on a deal. So that's another way to do it. And then the, the mortgage is amortized over 25 years usually, um, not 30 years as like a residential real estate deal would be, for example, but still it's amortized over a long period of time. And so you wanna make sure your interest rates play out in your favor. And I'm sorry, I just realized this is my third favorite one. My second favorite way of actually getting financing is really a seller finance deal. And I talked about that in my, um, I think it's either my second or my third course and the numbers I shared as well. It was a, a 24 unit that I bought that I had to sell or I had to have seller finance. So I basically only put down like, I forget, it was like three to 10% on the deal or something. And that was raised capital with my partners. So I didn't front the whole bill. Um, but then also like the, the owner had to carry it for a short term. So that was fun. That was a really fun project and it's still, um, I still have that property to this day. So it's, it's been fun. We've refinanced and cashed out multiple times already and my partners are pretty happy on it. And so I also talk about that, you know, unicorn kind of deal where you have an infinite return. We have zero money in it now. 
I mean, yes, we have a mortgage, but we've paid ourselves back over and over already from refinancing and cashing out on that. But that's a separate topic for another day or basically for my class because I do go through that in depth. So that's my second favorite way is seller financing if you can, but that is very hard to do. Um, and sometimes you don't luck out that way. I've seen seller financing deals where they require you to put down like almost 30% or 40%. So if you're a newbie starting off and you can barely afford to have 25% down, obviously you're not gonna go after that kind of deal, right? So that's when you would look at the next option, which is what I mentioned, um, working with larger financial institutions. Now there are ways to work with them as well. Um, I love using mortgage brokers. What does that mean? These guys are kind of like, they're like your henchmen. <laughs> they go out and battle for you. They'll go out and scour the market to find the best lenders for your deal. And they will get paid for that. So they're like the middleman, if you will. But that'll help save you time instead of you approaching each bank like going to Bank America, hey, I want a loan, and they say no. Then you go to Chase, then you go to Wells Fargo, or then you go to another bank, and they're like, no thanks. Well, instead of doing that, I use a mortgage broker, and they go through all of that. They, they reach out to credit unions as well for me that I would have never known of because they have access to that database. And then they come back and say, hey, hey Pam, here are your top three options. Here's what this bank is offering for their terms, You know, term number two, term number three, which one do you want? I like doing business that way more just because I have a lot of moving pieces and parts and I own a lot of properties now, but maybe when you're starting off, you might have time to do it on your own and you'll save money. Those mortgage brokers charge at least, at least 1% of the loan amount that you get. And I think they're worth, um, like if you find a good one, they're worth all of that and even more sometimes. Um, so that's an option to find, you know, financing for your deals. And then I've done this before too. Um, if you guys have heard of like hard money lenders, what that means is that they know you're desperate. You can't land a you can't land the traditional uh, financial route, and maybe you couldn't raise enough capital, and maybe you're like a total newbie, so you have a zero track record. That's why all the other banks have turned you down. Um, so they know that you're in a desperate position. So they're gonna raise their interest rates so it's like 7% and above. So that's hard money lending. They want the money like that really fast. So they're gonna, it's gonna be a short term loan, maybe two years or less, and they want their money back ASAP, but you're paying astronomical um, interest rates on it. So you have to factor that in into your analysis when you're trying to buy the property. Um, it's not my favorite way of doing it, but I have done it and I had a short term plan. So. Um, it was about, I think it was seven to 8% uh, when I did that hard money lending deal, but it was to close a gap because I, I didn't have enough to put as a down payment. And then I cashed them out within a year after I finished doing repairs on a property. So sometimes it could be part of your strategic plan. Uh, don't, it's not always a bad thing, but these are all the options you should know about. And then lastly, uh, there are, um, I guess there are, I'm trying to think, I lost my train of thought. Um, it was hard money lending, my other favorite way. Oh, these are called bridge loans. Um, exactly like what it is, or they're called gap loans. They bridge the gap, basically. So let's just say you couldn't raise enough capital, but then you don't have enough for a down payment and you don't wanna do a hard money lending, or maybe it didn't work out. It's called a bridge loan that you can get as well. Sometimes it's in conjunction with doing like construction on a property, like you're developing it. So it's not built yet, but they know the opportunity is there. So they're gonna help you get there in short term. So bridge loan is not ideal, but that's another option for you as well down the line as you get more savvy with your property purchases. But in all honesty, guys, OPM is your best bet. If you're working with other people's money in a, you know, in a safe and legal way, work with a syndication attorney, by the way, so that way they are advising you the right way because I have to put this out there, this is for your informational purposes only because I'm not your attorney. So before you make a decision, consult an attorney. Um, but in a nutshell, what I've done is, that's that's kind of the path of progression for me. I, I like working with other people's money and I, I'll have my attorney draft up documents that are appropriate for whatever deal we're working on. And then if not, then, you know, then it's the, um, the Sorry, then if not, then it's seller financing 
that's another way, but it's really hard to do, um, but you shouldn't give up on it. Always ask, because you never know. And then the traditional route, which is like, you know, putting 25% down, getting the numbers amortized over 20 to 30 years. Um, so that way you have a lower mortgage and you're working with a, kind of like with consistency, with a legit bank, with reputation. Um, and then down the line of like hard money lenders and bridge loans. So in a nutshell, I just went through a whole array of different financing options. If you wanna learn more, um, I go through this in further detail in my classes, um, or you can email me if you have any questions or connect with me on social media as well. Um, you can find me on Instagram. Um, my handle is Pam Scamardo. So stay in touch. If you have any questions, let me know.